Why has the story not come out before? I never intended it for it to come out at all, Bill. But uh, because of circumstances and and uh, things that happened within the last five six years, I decided that this was a time to do it because I was sort of. I don't want to say forced into it, but I was pursued. Desiree was pursued very, very strongly. And uh, also I felt like I owed it to Desiree. I had to tell her the story that she never did not know behind her father and my relationship. And I wanted her to know it in details. And it was so difficult to even tell Elvis uh, that I couldn't tell her, surely, unless I put the details, because it was very hurtful and still is to talk about certain events and things that happened and why we had to do it. So I had to put it on paper in details so she could see the dark side, I call it, of my life and the circumstances and why I made the decisions I did and to see a beautiful side of her father, which I didn't think everybody knew about. And I did want them to know that. And I wanted her in particular to know about it. It's unfair of me to ask in just the few minutes that we have to describe the kinds of feelings that you had because you, you'll you never be able to have enough time to describe them fully. But, I know. Do you mean from the beginning, Bill? Uh, feel free to pick oh, it up at, right. at, at any well, point along the way. I, I think that Elvis was probably one of the greatest inspiration of my life, not because he was Elvis Presley, because when I first heard his name, I thought it was an odd name, <laughs> but because he was... The man, if I would dream up a person to fall in love with, would have been that type of person because he had all the attributes that I would want in a person. His, the humanity, the gentleness, the love, the consideration for other people, the reason why he wanted to be successful or make his life successful was for others. All this made me fall in love with him long ago. And because of circumstances, and I know it has to be brief, we went on to fall in love very deeply. And there was always something between it. Needless to say, my circumstances in past. And uh, then in later years, we had a separation for 10 years because of my circumstances again and his. And I felt like I had to make the decision. Then went on to, he kept looking for me and found me and and we got back together on a basis of we had to explain to one another because we felt like we still love one another, but we were honorable to our commitments for our time. And then we made decisions that we had to live with the consequences and uh, knew what our limitations were and what we could or couldn't do because of circumstances and because of the my children, my family, that I couldn't let the whole world attack them or his career. And we were building lives, both of us, although Elvis always wanted to come out with our relationship in public. He honored my wishes, and I loved him more for that. Desiree, this unfolded how for you? Well, when I first found out who my father was, was uh, when I was uh, 17. And then at 19, I sent off my birth certificate and started using the name Presley. And I didn't know any of the facts. And it was a very hard decision for me to go to Mother and and get her to tell me, because I knew it was very painful for her. And she had actually never told me that Elvis was my father yet. She actually didn't tell me till 1982. And at this point, I was going by the name Presley, and everyone that I encountered always asked me, are you related to Elvis? And I would say yes, but I was very uncomfortable because I didn't know the facts surrounding it. And, you, you know, it's very... Uh, you know, it's a big thing to say, you know, you're El- I'm Elvis Presley's father and you don't know how, you know what I'm saying? So um, finally this, this Derry Matera, the co-writer, co-author, he approached me, he got a tip from someone that I was Elvis's daughter and followed me for about a year, wrote letters and so finally I agreed to meet him and ask him what he intended to do with the story and he asked me so many questions. I said, I don't know. I didn't have any answers for him. So finally I gave him Mother's number and had him call Mother. And I was so afraid. I thought Mother was going to kill me. <laughs> and it ended up she agreed to meet him, and and she liked him very much. He was. I agreed to meet him, Bill, because I thought 
I'm going to get him off of her back. He had dare him enter into our lives and try to expose. You know, it was, it was hurt, hurtful. And I knew that, of course, still protecting her and knowing who she was and how how important Elvis was to the world that they would try to exploit her like they did him and and no she they couldn't know because I had to tell her but I it was hard for me to tell her until 1982 when something pushed us into pushed me into telling Desiree because she came right out and and that was the most assertiveness she has ever shown in her life <laughs> You you can tell Bill about how I told you if you'd like. Honey. I was invited to. We were living in L.A. at the time, and I was invited to a party. That uh, it was my lawyer's party, and there was a lot of Hollywood people there. And Mother said, "Please don't go." And I said, "Well, why?" She says, "Just please don't go. I don't want you exploited." She and I said, "Why?" She says, "Because of your father." I said, "Who was my father?" Because I wanted to hear my mother say it to tell me. And she said, Elvis Presley. And I said, I know. She says, no, but you don't know the whole story. And it's a beautiful story, and, and I'll tell you someday. But it was, even then, it was very painful for her, you, you know, to come out and tell me, because it wasn't just a one, you know, one time that they were together. It was a love story many years. I didn't want Desiree to think that, you know, I met Elvis, we had an affair, and he left, and that was it. I wanted her to know there was not easy times. It, I mean, our relationship was something that was apparently had to be the way it was. I'm a firm believer that whatever case that I said, or whatever will be, will be. And we weren't meant to be together always, but as much as we could. But I wanted her to know that she was born out of great love. and But there was details, but it's hard to tell a young girl now look this was special sure everything's special you know she never she wanted me to tell her and I never could tell her I said you have to know the whole story because there were bad times for us there were hard times and I wanted her to understand why we had to be separated why I wasn't with him why that we didn't get married things like that and I couldn't do it, Bill, just t sitting down and telling her. I couldn't do it today if I had to just tell her everything, and she knows that. I went so far as after meeting Derry Matera, I thought, I have to go through this, and he will not be the right one, and no, I won't write this book. You know, this is all in my mind confirmed. I will not write anything, and he will not get a story. I will tell him to back away and leave my daughter alone. But he was very, he was very nice. And I'm not naive to where I just can swallow everything like that, but uh, he respected me and left me alone for a while. And he said, promise me you will just try to think about it. And I did. I said no to myself. And then I started thinking, I owe this to Desiree. And I spoke to Uncle Vester about it even, uh, who I love very much. And he was very close to Elvis. And he said, well, you owe it to her. You better think about what it'll do to her. And, you know, but... But if you have something good, and you had something good with Elvis, why don't you tell it? So, I mean, I got, and then Ronald Tanette, who's a good friend of ours, said, why are you not telling it? And I said, because I, I didn't have pic people taking pictures of us together. It was secret. I wanted to remain a secret. And he said, why? You have to tell. Because Desiree needs to know. She needs to know. So I made a set of tapes and told as much of the story, and it took me four years to do this. And telling her in details and completely devastating me because I had to open doors I had closed long ago because I didn't want to think about it except for the nice parts of it. And I did in case something would happen to me that she would never get the story. And I told Desiree to put him in a vault, which she did. Then started writing notes and writing pads and then working with Derry night after night after night after night and then finally saying, I'm not going through with this. I don't want the world to know about this. It's, it can't be. And, you know, it was very difficult for me. I'm not trying to be noble, but it's it was very hurtful to tell things that I didn't want anyone to know. But if she knew, she would have to be defending herself. Yes, I am. And so why not tell the world? And why am I not being, I don't mean myself, but why is it so hard for the public? I don't mean the public exactly, but 
the people that has had controversy about this to accept something that could be good about Elvis when they have accepted all the bad things written about him. I, it baffles me. But again... It happens, though, with every famous person, be it Elvis or Frank Sinatra, who right. you name it. People come out of the woodwork and say, well, yes, we had an affair back then, and, and this, is, this, is, this is Frank Sinatra's daughter. Mm -hmm. And you've, I'm sure, had that. Sure. And people, uh, the, the, the backlash, uh, I've, I've read some stories uh, in, uh, on the wire already that there are people who are challenging uh, all the claims that are in the book. And uh, Villard is standing behind you, to their credit. Right. <laughs> is, is, is this difficult for you, what we're doing right now? Do you, or do you enjoy going on tour talking um, about it? I, I don't enjoy any publicity, first of all, I have to be honest, because I'm, I'm a business person. If it's business, I love it. It's fine, you know, in my, in my life. But when it's centered on my personal life and publicity, I don't like it. I don't like pictures of myself. I don't like, but, and it's very difficult to talk about this because I do not, but no, and I don't mind it, Bill, because I know it has to be done. And I certainly owe it to the publishers and to Desiree and to Elvis. And I know that. I think it would be hard for, for any of us. To go public uh, in, in such a such a massive scale, I know. And, and expose the details that uh, that all of us would just logically want to keep. That's right. Uh, regardless of who it was that uh, right. that we'd been in love with, uh, and Elvis, I didn't even want to use his name, nor did I want to use. I wish he, I could have used John Jones, which is, you know, what he always went by when he called me and and things but uh and we always he always was disguised when we met and and he always respected my and honored me for wanting to be secret but and because he even if he wanted to be, to be different he did respect that Desiree I'm wondering has your mother's fear materialized have you been exploited No I haven't had too much of it yet you know we've been on the tour and been quite busy on the tour and it's been very positive People's reaction has been very good. You're able to lead a normal life. People don't hound you. The National Enquirer isn't, uh, all, isn't hiding behind your bushes or something. There's been a few hiding behind the bushes, but yes. they've, even they've been very, fairly kind as well. It occurred to me that if, if Derry Matera had worked for the National Enquirer, instead of being <laughs> the reputable journalist that he apparently is, uh, this could have ended up completely different. Oh, believe me, I thought about that too, and uh, I I told him in a very nice way to back away and stay away, and then he just, and he proved himself because that's what I feel about every human being—you can't really judge them—and his credibility came through because I know that he's had a difficult time writing this with me because I didn't want to give them him all the facts, the dark side, my early age. I fought like crazy to keep that out. Were you uh, I, just, I, I don't mean you are, but, no, but no, you, were, you, were you surprised by some of the, the, the parts that he wrote here where he said, where he commented on your perception and then he said, well, this is what I really found out. I found that particularly striking. Uh, I hated him when he did all that <laughs> research. I, I have argued so many nights with him on the phone, had dare you bother my friends or people I knew? How dare you do this? And then I understood, though, because he had to do this. Um, even when he found out I was younger than, because I tried to go by an older age all my life, I did. And I, and I hated him for that. And uh, then I realized, he said, it has to be done that way. And he finally convinced me. Every little thing was a little bit chipping away, like the poem. No, you're not getting this poem. It's mine. It was not to be seen by anyone else. And finally, after six months, I gave and I thought, and I prayed about it too, and spoke to Desiree and the family about it. And they said, well, it's beautiful. Why don't you sh let them print it? So we decided to do it. I, f I finally decided to do it. And then uh, we, we, the uh, publisher and Derry, contacted Graceland. I don't know why. I, it was unbeknownst to me. I would not have contacted him personally because I don't think anyone should own anything about everyone in the world, their voice, their likeness. Their, a letter that was written to me and given to me by Elvis, that's bad, I think. They refused to let us print it, and that hurt me more after being convinced to let, let the publisher print it. So I'm very hurt about that, but it ex it is explained in that in the book are you lonesome tonight that they refused and maybe at one point very soon we will show it to the world because i would like for them to see it now 
I dare them say that it doesn't exist when they refuse to let us do it. I was curious about one thing. I know we're running out of time, but um, Desiree, you and I are maybe just a half a generation too young to have been in, in Elvis's prime. And we, we probably started growing up on the kind of music that immediately followed his peak of popularity. Did you listen to Elvis records when you were growing up? Did you enjoy his music? I was never into the rock and roll of Elvis. I loved his ballads. I studied piano for many years and played a lot of them on the piano. And I did enjoy hearing them. Impossible Dream, Love Me Tinder. All of his slower ballad type music. I love that. Do you like his movies? I, some of them, you know, <laughs> a lot of them are very silly. But, um, and he, you know, he hated doing them. He really did because it portrayed him in something, you know, that he, he wasn't. Elvis. He wasn't Elvis in the movie. He was not the Elvis, the man that I knew. He, and he wanted to portray the kind of person he was so badly. I spoke to Desiree and everyone that loved him, and still do, about that. And he really planned on doing something about that and getting a more serious vein. <laughs> 